Welcome back to the channel, and I'm here today with this wonderful Taylor AD22E acoustic guitar. This is a grand concert size guitar from Taylor's American Dream line, which means that it's American made but more affordable because it's a little more bare bones in terms of the appointments. But it is a professional level guitar, and it absolutely blew me away. So I was looking for a smaller bodied acoustic with a slightly shorter scale length uh, to play more lead style stuff on for my next project. So at a, a local music store, Pied Piper in Charleston, West Virginia, I tried out several of their tailors that would fit the bill because I've also been wanting a tailor for quite a while. I tried this, a 12 fret 322 CE and a 412 CE. And even though this was by a considerable margin, the least expensive of the three, I definitely liked it the best for this purpose. So, let me tell you a little bit about this guitar. It has a mahogany top, sepale back and sides, mahogany neck, eucalyptus fingerboard, tusk nut, and it is just everything you need and nothing you don't. Uh, at Pied Piper, I think models they already had in stock when prices went up were still the original prices to their credit. So I got this for $16.99 brand new. I think the price is now $17.99 in late September 2024 as I record this on Sweetwater. So uh, that was really nice. And uh, the other models were the same way. They were all 100 or 200 less than they are now. So... Uh, I thought that was great, and that's actually one thing that spurred me to do some wheeling and dealing to be able to get it. But uh, basically, and I'm going to link below uh, to a, a video from Alamo Music because they are ex it's a great channel, and they are experts on Taylor guitars, and uh, my greatest expertise is more in the electric realm, but uh, I learned a lot from them and learned about the benefits of a mahogany top guitar. So, most guitars are uh, spruce top, acoustic guitars that is. Uh, that is by far the most common top you'll see. A, a spruce top has a little, little brighter and more overtones. What the mahogany does is it gives it a warmer sound, more of a mid-range punch, and more compression so it's all I often uh, hear it described as a dry sound, and having played this one a lot, I absolutely agree. You don't get those rich, and I'm having to hold it because as I'm talking, it, it is resonating, which shows what a good guitar it is. Uh, all these same rich overtones you do with like a spruce top and a, uh, say, rosewood uh, back and sides, but... Uh, what you get is a more focused mid-range attack and more compression, which means that if you have trouble evening out your uh, picking hand or strumming hand dynamics, the top gives you a little bit of help in that regard. And uh, it's also, I have not really, well, I have not at all recorded other than some for this video uh, with it yet, but I can definitely see where that would come in handy because in your recording application, uh, just having that dry, it really stresses the fundamental, uh, makes it really sit in the mix nicely, I'm sure. Uh, because as nice as those rich overtones can be, uh, that when you're putting them in a mix, uh, sometimes you don't want all that. You just want it to sit where it sits. And I can see where this definitely could do that. And with the compression that the mahogany top gives, uh, I'm really looking forward to recording with it and just getting a different sound, because mostly I have Dreadnoughts, or the Takamini I have, I think, is a, it's a next body shape, which is a take on a jumbo, I believe, so having a smaller body guitar is uh, a different sound. I really just absolutely love it. So solid mahogany top, Sapele back and sides, which is said to have, and all solid back and sides too, I should add, uh, all the American Dream guitars are solid. Uh, so, that and the combination of this body style and a slightly shorter scale length, I believe it's a 24 
1.875 inch scale length and a one and three quarter nut. Uh, it really does give it a great feel for playing lead and a great sound for playing lead. I can see where it really cut through a mix. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, but from what I can tell, this is probably slightly smaller bodied than a triple O Martin, uh, which I have an OM Martin, which I love. But this is a little bit different because I think it's a little uh, more set up for uh, flat picking, I think, than that than my OM Martin is, uh, which has, uh, I believe, slightly wider string spacing. And I don't claim to be a great finger picker by any means, so I'll be doing a lot of flat picking because I'm mainly an electric player uh, playing acoustic is uh, usually how I approach it. I'm trying to learn better. Now, the other thing about Taylor guitars, which I love, and this is not just marketing hype, is a few years ago they came out with what they call their V-Class Bracing. And it really helps bring out the best of the top of an acoustic guitar. One reason I wanted this size class is the next, the Grand Theater, the next size down has the C-Class Bracing, which is specifically designed for that size guitar, but it's not the V-Class, which just adds great projection and sustain. And again, uh, I'll link a video below where the Alamo Music guys talk about it because they know a lot more about it than me. But I, you really can tell the difference uh, compared to the traditional X bracing. So this is a lot of guitar for the money. And the fit and finish uh, is impeccable. We'll take a little closer look uh, later in the video, but the fretwork is flawless. I mean, it's just perfect. And yes, it has eucalyptus instead of ebony, and I really love the way their ebony prep boards look. So I really went back and forth between this and the 12 fret 322, but uh, for $700 less, I actually liked it a little bit better, I think, in most ways. Not in all ways. Uh, I like the, the neck carve, I believe, is identical, but it was a little smoother finish. You can really feel the wood, which is a good thing, but just something about that ebony neck, or ebony fretboard rather, and that neck on that 322, I just loved. I absolutely love this too. Don't get me wrong, it's a great, great neck. But uh, I just think it's fantastic. I think I may have started to say this earlier and got off on something else. The Sapele has sort of a sound like mahogany, uh, but with a little more top end. And I think that's great for what exactly what I'm looking for with this guitar. So, oh, and also it comes with the same Taylor uh, Expression System 2 uh, with the, I think, volume, treble, and bass uh, controls here, which would be the same as you would find on a 914 for thousands of dollars more. So I'll get you some sound samples uh, of just the guitar unplugged, get some sound samples with it uh, plugged in, and get some comparisons as well, and in addition, taking a closer look to really uh, give this guitar the attention it deserves, because it is a fantastic guitar. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Taylor AD22E. The top is mahogany, has a beautiful grain. It's a solid mahogany top, eucalyptus bridge, micarta saddle there. See a simple but pretty rosette. There's the model information in there. Celluloid pick guard, nice and thin. You see no binding. And you can see from this angle, the Sapele uh, sides. The fret work, try to get it focused in here. You can see how well the fret ends are dressed. It's just phenomenal. All the way up the neck on both sides. See the nut is cut supremely well. And these come with the Adario uh, 12 to 53, 12 to 53 rather, excuse me, strings. You can see how uh, good the fret work is. That's a eucalyptus fretboard, feels great. Looks great. I might slightly prefer the look and feel of ebony, but that's very minor. There is the uh, traditional Taylor headstock has the standard nickel tuners. It is a uh, one and three quarter 
nut. The standard Taylor neck shape. Flip it over here. Tell it's a matte finish. Really great feel to the neck. I love the smooth, smooth feel of the 322 I played, but I really love this as well. See the joint there. And a good look here at the Sapele back. And it's just a beautiful guitar. Very stripped in, you can see no binding, but it has the chamfered edges. It's uh, really comfortable to play. And I just absolutely love it. I think that uh, for the money for an American made major brand guitar, uh, if you're looking for something this size, this really is tough to beat. Taking a closer look at the Aero case, which all American Dream Tailors come in. It is a soft shell case. Very nice. Have the front pocket here with your owner essentials. It's padded to get not hard shell. And it has this beautiful lining, very soft. Good neck support there. And then if you turn it around to the back, and I've already used this feature, has a couple of very nice straps. And you can access a little back compartment there as well. So it's a very nice case. Starting out with the SM57 pointed towards the body. Okay, now some sound samples with the SM57 pointed between the 12th fret and the sound hole about where the neck joins the body.
Okay, to give you an idea of what this sounds like plugged in, I'm gonna play it through a small Vox acoustic amp mic'd with an SM57. I'm gonna go into the next room to actually play it. So you're getting as much of the amp as opposed to the acoustic guitar itself in these sound samples. So it has a volume, a bass and a treble control. Uh, it basically, you turn them both down to get a mid boost effect and both up to get a mid scoop effect. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play one with everything set on five, we'll say is in the middle, one with a mid scoop and one with a mid boost uh, to give you an idea. And they'll be probably for the uh, scoops, bass and treble will be turned on about seven, uh, for the boost about three. So, let's see what it does. Okay, and now we're just going to do a few comparisons between the Grand Concert Size Taylor 8022E and this Epiphone inspired by Gibson J45. So we have a sloped shoulder dreadnought and a Grand Concert. Uh, definitely, you can just tell by looking, I'm trying to hold as evenly as possible, that the dreadnought, definitely a bigger guitar. Uh, even though this has a 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length, so the scale is actually a bit shorter, uh, but this has a solid spruce top, solid mahogany back and sides. And uh, I think that'll just give you a, a good comparison, just very general. These are not guitars that you would typically be cross shopping, but just give you a little bit of the idea of the difference between a spruce top dreadnought and a mahogany top grand concert. So this should be fun. Let's see what they can do.
final thoughts. This is an amazing guitar. I've never played a Taylor acoustic, which was not an amazing guitar. Uh, it's great for the price. It's great in general. I'm intensely impressed uh, by the American Dream series, and uh, I'm extremely happy with this. Uh, I think that the uh, no frills appearance really suits a mahogany top acoustic, and it just does what it's supposed to do perfectly. And uh, again, this was a case of I went into the shop, played several guitars, and it happened to be the cheapest one that fit the bill was the one I liked the best, and it was this one. So uh, don't let the fact that they're not as highly appointed as higher end tailors scare you away. The American Dream line is for real. I absolutely love it. Now, let me say that same shop, uh, I was shopping uh, for a larger acoustic and it being the Takamini last year. I played an 814 Builders Edition, uh, which the salesperson insisted I played, even though he knew it was well out of the budget I was shopping in. It might have been the nicest guitar I've ever played in my life. So maybe someday uh, I'll get one of those uh, if I'm able to uh, afford and justify it. But uh, for now, this American dream is truly is a dream. And I absolutely love it. So if you have any questions... Uh, please leave them below. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on rocking.